Hey guys, Jesse here. In this video, I'm gonna be unboxing, setting up, and doing some basic operations with my new milling machine, the PM728VT. I've been wanting one of these for what feels like years at this point, so this entire setup process was extremely cathartic. Can't cut it. Yeah. Yes, this is the broken katana. Don't at me. Okay, I got that entire side off. All right, it's occurred to me that I'm a dumbass and I could have just unscrewed all of these and lifted it off. Wow, is it really the one size that I left on the table? Oh, it is, of course it is. Whoa. It's so interesting, I think they like hot glued these in. Okay, maybe not all of them, but. The PM728VT is classified as a tabletop mill. It's not one of those big knee mills. So in the process of setting this up, I also had to construct the stand. Some of the other things that I bought with my mill from Precision Matthews were a bunch of end mills, some whey oil, a drill chuck, a large clamping kit, and 11 different sizes of R8 collet. I'm gonna be real with you guys, the stand didn't really impress me a whole lot. It could definitely do the job, and I wasn't scared of it not holding up the mill, but for the amount of money that I paid for it, I would have expected it to be a little bit sturdier. Even though the sheet metal was thin, the thing that I really liked about this stand was that it had really high quality leveling feet. The floor in the garage wasn't super planar, so it was important for me to get it flat with these so that the mill didn't wobble. Hello? <coughs> Thing is oily. We do not have a forklift or a chain hoist, so we're gonna use our power to move it. The PM728VT weighs around 370 pounds, and though that's liftable, I didn't want to take any chances, so I went to Harbor Freight and I got myself one of these engine hoists that can lift up to two tons. When I was little, I was extremely into Legos, and now that I'm an adult, building this was basically just adult Legos. One of the cool things about this engine hoist is that it can fold into a smaller space, so it's not going to be taking up that much space in my shop. So, you've taken delivery of one of our Precision Matthews bench mills. There was some things that I had to do before I could hoist the mill into the air, and one of those things was I had to put a piece of wood in the mill so that the strap didn't contact the mill itself. Give me, give me three, give me three. Drop it, drop it all the way. Not all the way, not all the way, but like. 
Oh my god, it's so oily. You know it's good when it comes covered in oil, in the super thick oil. After wiping the mill down and mounting it to the stand itself, it was time to get ready to install the DRO. When you buy the mill with a DRO from the Precision Matthews factory, they already installed the scales, so all I really had to do was install the display, which was really nice. the same power cable that goes into like a PC. Maybe it literally is a PC. Okay. Alright. Does this thing turn on? Oh. Oh! Okay. Now, everything's connected, so if I spin this, I have accuracy down to the... It's every point zero 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 two. Two, th two ten thousandths of accuracy. That's so crazy. Right now my mill isn't perfectly like level this way. So I gotta make sure it's perfectly level. And uh, I have this, it's supposed to like help me do that. I don't really know how to use this. I'm gonna try to figure it out. I think I just, Put this all the way up, tighten that, and then now. This process right here is called tramming the mill. It's extremely important because if you don't do it, your cutters are gonna be cutting at a slight angle and then your pieces won't actually be flat if you try to mill them flat. So I gotta turn this into, that's zeroed. Yeah, that's zero there. That's uh... oh. oh. Okay, we're off by quite a bit. I think I need to get these to read the same thing or something. Oh wait, that's too much. Oh, that's like almost it. Ooh, that's pretty good. After paying for expedited shipping, Good. Okay. All right, one really cool thing you can do with a mill a billion times faster than by hand is by carving slots for like tangs and stuff. Like imagine this was a guard and I needed to get my tang slotted in here. Before I used to drill a bunch of holes and file them out and then slowly, slowly get them to size. Now I can essentially mill a channel and I can fit the tang to the channel. I can standardize the size of my tangs and ensure that my fit's perfect. I'm gonna use this end mill, this carbide end mill and this quarter inch collet. This isn't the biggest mill, so I can't take like cuts through the entire thing. So it's actually faster to drill a bunch of holes next to each other and then mill the webbing out. If I were to try and carve a slot out of this, it would easily take me like four to five hours if I was trying to do like perfect fit but on the mill, I'm, I'm willing to bet it'll take me less than 20 minutes, even though it's my first time doing it. I think I wanna, I'm just gonna like zero all of these axes to know where I'm at. And I'm gonna do like a, I'm gonna do a one inch slot. And because this is a quarter inch end mill, I'll have to move three quarters of an inch, right? For this size of end mill, I need a thousand RPM. Okay, I think I'm gonna add some of this uh, lubricant. Now I'm just gonna drill a hole basically. Okay, evidently I did something wrong because the drill bit's not supposed to break. I'm starting to think that my 20 minute first time estimation is wrong. Okay. I'm evidently the worst machinist in the world, so rather than using carbide on my first try, I'm gonna use high-speed steel. I think this will be better to, to learn on. 
Let's do this properly this time. 1000 RPM. Whoa, look at that. Almost through? Yep. Alright, so drilling the hole isn't necessarily the hard part, but when you're using a drill press, you have to have the holes be slightly apart from each other, or else the second hole is going to wander into the first hole. But what I can do here, I can move it half the diameter over. Alright, we're going to go to 0.125, which is half a diameter over. Nice. And now if I go down, you see how I'm like, if, if I was using a regular drill bit, it would immediately wander into that first hole. But now, I can literally just do it right here and nothing bad will happen. See that? It's a hole right next to another hole. It's a hole right next to another hole. And now I can move my table another 0.15 to 0.25. That, that was like much less than 10 minutes. And I basically have a tank slot, but I need to get those ridges out. I used to use the files for this, but now I can just mill through it and get perfectly parallel sides. I don't have any idea what I'm doing, so we'll see what happens. And I think I can take a heavier pass. I think I'm gonna go 40,000 because I'm fairly on 11. Okay, I think I'm just gonna mill the entire last 100 thou at once. And I think it'll be pretty glorious. Nice. What was that, 15 minutes? And I have a perfectly parallel slot that's a quarter inch across. Why didn't I get one of these earlier? It's literally not even that expensive. Like, look at that. Okay, I, I kind of want to see how accurate the mill is. So let's check the, the width of this thing. It's supposed to be an inch, and it is an inch and one thou. That is crazy. Let's check how wide it is. It's supposed to be a quarter of an inch. Wow, that's within seven thou. What do you normally? Like I can get perfect fit ups, but getting a perfectly parallel slot like this, that's exactly to measurement. You, you literally can't do that with a file. Like unless you're spending days taking super tight passes, you cannot get this with a file. And I just did that with a mill with bad machining skills in like, what was it, like 20 minutes. Like that's actually crazy. All right, it's been a couple days. I love the packaging, holy crap, look at that. So we got this thing. <laughs> what? Wow, that's really funny actually. This thing doesn't come with the actual carbide insert. <sighs> I think this guy goes right here. Look at that, nice tight fit. Oh, it's so sad. Okay, so this will sit in like this. There we go. Imagine that there's uh, the things in here that are supposed to be there. Oh my gosh, that's so cool, look at that. All right, look what showed up in the mail. Some really nice carbide inserts for cutting stainless steel. These are so nice because each four of these sides can be used, which means I essentially have 40 inserts rather than 10. I probably won't have to buy inserts for like the rest of my life. Nice, look at that.
the machine doesn't even feel it. Look at those chips. Look at that surface finish. Look at that, it's shiny. Okay, 20 thou cut was so easy. I think I'm gonna do a, a 40 thou cut and see what happens. And I'm gonna turn the RP up to like 900 slash 1000. Oh my gosh. Okay, there's some vibrations for that. I think I need to go a little slower. Is that worse or better? Uh, I can't tell. I think that's actually worse. Maybe a thousand. That's definitely worse. I think 800 on a 30 thou cut might be best. But yeah, that's everything I wanted to show in this video. I think in the future, maybe a couple of years down the line, I want to upgrade to a full-size email. But for now, with the size of shop I have, this is more than enough. It's pretty obvious that I don't really have any idea how to use this thing. So if you have any like tips and tricks for a milling machine that I should probably know, please leave them in the comments. I'll read every single one. I foresee myself breaking a lot of end mills in future videos. Hopefully that number will go down as time goes on, but yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you.